So for my next step, I'm going to go ahead and enter in the rest of the articulations that are in this. Um, once again, we'll use pretty much use the keypad to do most of this work. Um, now, if I look at the bass part, I can see that the um, it's pretty much staccato all the way through. So I'm going to double, I'm going to triple click that, and then press the slash key on the keypad, and it puts it in all the way. Now I may have to take out one or two. I don't remember, but um, so we might have to do that. And so we can also just go in and, and change some of the individual notes. Um, and so let's see. Here we have. So we, if when we need a note, we just click on it and select it, and now you'll notice that uh, our cello part is right now in bass clef, and we're going to want it later on into uh, to be placed into it to a tenor clef, and we'll do that shortly. But okay, I don't see anything else there. Uh, wait, no, we do have, looks like a bit of an accent on one of the viola part coming in. All right, just about everything's done to uh, this variation. Um, and so we just have a few last things to do. Let's start out by changing the clef and the cello part. Um, Use the sh Q shortcut to select the clef tool, and I'm going to click and place it in there. So now the cello part is in the correct clef. We need to add some dynamics, and we'll click right there, and we use the shortcut command E, and you click, and then you can right click to get your options here. And then once it's created, you can then select it and use the option key to place it on all of the staves, except for that one. Click right there, and that's just pianissimo. And if you see there is a shortcut for piano, that would work there. Okay, for our slurs, slurs are really quite simple. If you want to slur just from one note to the next, select the first note and click it, and click it, press yeah. S. If you need to do multiple notes, select all of the notes you want to include with the slur and then hold it down. You could, of course, just click and drag it longer if you needed to. Okay. And then um, when you have an entire measure that needs to be slurred, for example, oops, too far. Stop using the mouse to do this. Okay, for example, right here, if you wanted the entire measure, just select the measure and then select the slur. So those are the, the main edits that we have to do here. I'm going to go through and put them all in. Um, this will take a few minutes, and, uh, and then we'll be back. All right, so let's go ahead and enter, edit our piano part. Um, these first two notes right here um, need an accent, so we'll go ahead and put those on. You can see that we can do both staves at one time. Um, in our score here, you'll notice that there are no triplet numbers in on these measures, so we'll get rid of those by right-clicking and selecting the inspector and changing the tuplet down here to none instead of number, and so now those are gone. Now, as you can see, the rest of the piano part came in rather strange. I think I'll pull it apart just a little bit so we can see it. Um, it the beams didn't come really come in the way we were hoping for, and then their stem directions are a little unusual. There's all sorts of problems, um, and we're going to try and fix this as easily as possible. Um, so we're going to start out, and we have to go into the engraving rules. Now, I know this uh, will cause some people some trepidation. Um, and it's probably not entirely unwarranted, but it's really not that difficult to work with these. And so we're going to work with the beams and the stems. And the first thing we need to do is just tell it to go ahead and beam over rest and not break the secondary beam. Uh, so that will work. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to turn off middle rests. Um, we don't want it to, to change the slant of the middle rests. So we're going to go like, 
see, so now we have slanted beams, which we definitely want, and we have, um, and the uh, secondary beams are going all the way through. So that's a good thing. But now we also need to beam these in groups of four, not groups of three, not groups of two. So um, we'll run over here to the end of this piece. And we'll go up here and select beam groups. Oops. There we go, beam groups. And we're going to beam them into four eighth notes. Okay, and so now we've got it. Um, it looks not too bad. I mean, we've got some, obviously, some stem direction issues that we'll have to fix and some collision issues that we'll have to fix. Um, but that's improved things quite a bit. But it's not quite what we're seeing over here. Um, and so what we are seeing over here is that the rests are also being offset. And as near as I can tell, there's no real easy way to do that other than to manually go ahead and click on a rest and use your arrow cursor to move it up. And so I'm going to have to do this. Okay. And then when we reset that position, we hopefully will get a little different. Now, I'm, I'm also noticing that the, the angle of these beams isn't really as severe as the angle we're seeing in some of these others. So I think I'm going to go back into the engraving rules and do one more thing. See, the default slant per interval is one space for an octave. And uh, I think I'm going to need a little bit more. So I'm going to change that to two. And you can see that we get a much better angle. By default, what will happen is because we've turned off the uh, middle rest, as I move the rest up, you'll see that the beams now shorten and become about the right length. Um, and so if you move your rests, um, you just move those around a little bit. So here. And we may go in and decide that what we will also want to do something with the. Uh, um, length of the, the stems themselves. And so you just move these around until you get them so that they look about what, the way you want them to.